This is the Change the Map podcast, where we inspire, educate, and resource you to transform the Buddhist world through prayer and action. Join us as we explore the mystical world of Buddhism, discover its unique challenges, meet Buddhist background followers of Jesus, and engage in strategic prayer to change the spiritual map of the Buddhist world. This month, we're joined by Jonathan Lorenz. Jonathan is a longtime missionary, pastor of ICA International Church in Tokyo, Japan, and the director of AP Media Japan. On this episode, Jonathan talks about the challenges of working in one of the biggest and most unreached countries on the planet. He also shares how, in spite of obstacles, doors are being opened and lives are being changed in Japan. Welcome to the Change the Map podcast. I'm your host, Josh, and this is a podcast for pastors, missions leaders, and for people that want to get more involved in the Great Commission. If this is your first time with the podcast and you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you're listening to the audio version, you can subscribe to the podcast there, and that'll just ensure that you get all of our content as it comes out. Well, I'm excited to be here with Jonathan Lawrence. Um, we are here on location, so if it looks a little bit different, that's why. Yeah. And uh, we're here in Tokyo, Japan. And so, Jonathan, for people that don't know you, have never heard about you, why don't you just give us a little bit of background on your ministry and your family? Yeah, I, I grew up in a, a kind of a ministry family. My, my parents were pastors and evangelists, and um, so they pastored multiple churches, planted churches. Uh, we spent... I'm seven years of my teenage life, like traveling around, traveling around evangelizing. And okay. And then I was a musician and, and honestly thought that that's what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And we were living in the Nashville area, thought I was going to be a professional drummer. And, and, uh, uh, Melissa, my wife and I, we, we got married during that time while we were, um, serving at, in the church that we planted as a, as, with my family and essentially. And, um, planted that church and we were just serving in kind of a bunch of different capacities. And during that time we, we had our first, first baby and, and her name's London. And, uh, and so, um, and so we were, yeah, just serving in local church and, and starting to feel that pull of God towards like away from my, you know, dream of being a musician yeah. and kind of doing that for the rest of my life and feeling God pull me towards full-time ministry. But there was just like this, kind of huge question mark about what that, you know, might be. Yeah. And so Melissa and I were, we were just, you know, kind of putting our heads down, just like being faithful with where God put us and sure. with what he gave us and really not knowing what the future was going to hold, you know? And so we spent like the first, you know, five years of our marriage just kind of, you know, serving and, you know, just in different capacities and in different places in the church and, 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 you know, really, uh, with, with a heart for young adults and, and, uh, and God moved in, in really great ways, but we just, we had no idea we were going to end up yeah. all the way up. So here. Japan is a little yeah. bit different than like American culture yeah. from what I've seen so far. You know, <laughs> what, what brought you to Japan? Why Japan? You could have went, gone anywhere. So what, what was it about Japan? That... Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting because we were missions directors for the church at the time and we, okay. And actually, right shortly before we had London, we, we, we said, like, before we have kids, let's take a dream trip. Let's just go somewhere. My wife had kind of felt a call to missions early on in life. Okay. I did not. Yeah. And uh, so I had really no interest in being a missionary, but, um, but we, we just fell in love with the culture uh, of Japan. And we had this dream of, like, traveling here and going on this dream vacation. And, yeah. and, uh, anyway, so right during the time that we were sort of planning and saving for this, you know, big trip, uh, a missionary had left, uh, just a, like a DVD. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't see those much anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so they left the DVD and I like, I put, I, I remember I like, you know, I put it in and I was by myself at the time and I sat in my living room and, and it, and, uh, and it just began to share that, you know, that 99% of Japan is mm. unreached, you know, that they don't know the gospel at all. They've never even heard of Jesus. And, um, and so for, for such a, I, you know, I think for, uh, our love for Japan was so centered on the culture and so many great, amazing aspects, but was not connected in any way to the people. And it was just like this lightning bolt, you know, sort of hit me and, 
I just began to like cry and wow. I was like, I had no idea why I was like, God, what are you doing? Why in the world? It was just like this, like this moment of just cl clarity and just like seeing, uh, the, the desperate need over here. And I like wrote a missionary that had left that DVD and I wrote him and I said, I don't know what God's doing. I just like feel this, you know, kind of crazy pull. And he was just like, please come. It's yeah. like so spiritually dark here. And then I, I came to Melissa and I didn't tell her at yeah. all what, really that God had like began to show me that we were supposed to be, you know, called to Japan. And, and I just asked her, she, she'd always felt this pull to, to somewhere else and, uh, to, to Africa. And I thought if we ever became missionaries, that's probably where, you know, we'd end up. But, yeah. But anyway, so she, I, I just said, Hey, if you could go anywhere on the world and be a missionary, where would you go? Mm. And she like two seconds passed, you know, and she's like Japan. Like wow. for sure. Yeah. And it was just like, God was just kind of a, a moment of like everything clicking into place and sort of these prayers about our future. And then just seeing God's hand at work and the timing of God come together in the right moment to bring us here. And so we never took that dream vacation. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we arrived with, uh, in 2014 with a two and a half year old and Melissa was pregnant with our second and uh, 18 bags of luggage and never yeah. had stepped foot in here wow, you know, before. Wow. So, yeah. Not even a precation. No, no, no. <laughs> there was no preliminary trip. And yeah. even some of the family was like, you know, some, some, some of our, you know, so, some of the distant family too were like, are you sure? Like, are you sure? <laughs> like you're really going to, yeah. you're really going to go there without visiting, you know? But I think you just, you just know when God drops something in your heart that is so powerful that you can't not, do it. Yeah. And that's what it felt like. And it's eight years, almost nine years later yeah. and you're still here. So, yeah. so what was it when, you know, what, what are some of the things that you noticed? I mean, it's even spiritually when you guys were planning to come, when you were first, like when you first got here, I mean, what is, what is Japan like? like what are some of the needs? Well, we knew we were coming challenges. Yeah. Sorry. We, we knew we were coming to the largest city in the world. And that just sounded like a sentence that had no meaning for us. So when we landed, that became real, you know. I think when you talk about great need, but then you're walking the streets of tens of millions of people and the population is so dense around you, you know, I think people kind of have seen glimpses of Japan and how, you know, people get packed into trains and all that kind of thing. When you're when you're experiencing that firsthand and you're walking down the street and you are just so aware of how big the need is, it suddenly feels just incredibly overwhelming. Yeah. And I think you really do become cognizant of that darkness that was like told to us, you know, before we came and just a sense of, uh, just it, it, I, almost like a Josh, it was almost like a, like a, a cloud over the city of just like heaviness that I felt when we arrived here and wondering like just a sense of hopelessness yeah. that I can't just even fully describe. Yeah. Um, and then just seeing, you know, just how Japanese people were largely just cogs in the wheel of economy here Yeah. and, uh, how hopeless that, that and bleak that, you know, yeah. that future is for sure. them. Um, and just seeing people just driven, um, to just, make money just so that they can get to a future and there's no real deeper meaning behind what they're doing and why they're living and any of that, you know, I yeah. think that was just, uh, it was incredibly, incredibly impactful, you know, to us. Mm -hmm. So trying to get settled into a country like that with, uh, you know, a young one and then a baby on the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty shocking, you know, as a family. Mm hmm. So this country, is, one of the crazy things that I've noticed about it is that you do have all of this modern stuff, but there's still so much rich tradition yeah. and culture right. um, built into the, the super modern, clean cut, you know, all of yeah. those kind of things. Like, yeah. how do those things um, work hand in hand and, and how does the church address a culture like that? Yeah, I think it's interesting because you, you have this perception of Japan as being ultra modern and and they are in so many ways. They They pioneered, you know, a lot of robo robotics technology. And so you get here in Tokyo is there's areas of Tokyo that are 
incredibly modern, incredibly like forward thinking and efficient. Yeah. Efficient. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, they're known for efficiency. And then, and then you've got this strain, like you've got, you know, incredible modern buildings that are right next to hundreds and hundreds of years old temples, you know, that are that, so you've got this dichotomy of old and new and you see it in the architecture, you see it in the people, you know, because we've got, the largest population of elderly people in the world. Wow. And then we've got tons of, you know, young people where there's just this divide in the middle, you know? So we've got offices, you know, <laughs> that are still using fax machines. That's yeah. like <laughs> still one of the main ways to yeah. like communicate. And so that, wow. that becomes prevalent in sort of every part of culture and even, even, even the church, mm-hmm. you know, is because it's, it can be so, uh, so, so much celebrating tradition um, and being connected to it and kind of slow moving in its adoption of, of new things. But, um, but you never know when it's going to kind of crop its head, you know, to like see this, this, uh, collision of two very distinct and different, um, you know, things. And so it's, yeah, it's fascinating. So, uh, we know within the church, you know, context, um, I think, you know, sometimes we can see that, churches swing more towards a traditional, you know, way. And so for us here in an international church, we can kind of circumvent a little bit of that, uh, that sure. traditional aspect. And, and actually most of the Japanese people that go to our church, they don't want traditional. They, mm. they actually kind of swing more towards the modern side. So even when the, in the Japanese people, you get this kind of like some people wanting wow. one thing and yeah. And so how did, how did, not Japan necessarily, but as far as like the church is, con- is concerned, uh, handle COVID, you know, yeah. where you're kind of forced into some of these modern, you know, ways of reaching people. Yeah. I mean, at least in your context, I don't know if you don't have to answer for all of the churches, but right. at least at your church, you know, how do you see um, them approaching this? You kind of have to look at it in a modern way when you're, when you can't come to church, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we had a background, you know, working in media ministry when we got here, which helped us during COVID because we had all these tools and we had equipment to use. A lot of churches didn't have that, you know, so Japanese churches, um, some, of course, a lot, you know, were able to pivot, um, and adapt. And then some, you know, just at times literally had to shut the door. They didn't know how to continue ministry. Sure. In the international church, it was, you know, we were just taking over ICA here in Tokyo and it was such an interesting time to take over a church. Um, but it was a good time because we came in with skills to be able to help the church adapt to do live streaming and things like that. But essentially, you know, like anywhere else, the church scattered, you know, to a degree we went through, I think maybe six, you know, uh, states of emergency here (laughs) in, in Japan. Um, and so, and there were periods of time where we had to simply just meet on online. And, and so we were trying to figure out how do we continue driving community here, um, digitally and, and effectively, and what are the results of that going to be? Are we going to, are we going to still be able to reach people effectively here? And what we were shocked to find Josh is that like, God still was reaching people through those services wow. and through those moments. I mean, we were literally at one point live streaming from our living room, you know, and, and we were, you know, doing pre recorded stuff and sending that out. And, um, and then people were watching and we just had, it was, it was crazy. Cause when we finally got back into the church building and even though we were, you know, we were still live streaming or doing hybrid we were seeing people come into the doors of the church that had never been to a church wow. in a time when the church itself wasn't yeah. sometimes willing to come into the <laughs> yeah. doors of the church. Yeah, sure. That was incredible. Like I can remember literally one Sunday where um, it was, it was like a time where very few people were coming back to the church yet. They were kind of staying away. And we had uh, a young guy from China that had arrived in Japan and, came through the door and he had never spoken English outside of a classroom. And he's like, I've never been to a church before and I've never spoken English. (laughs) And it's like, and so you're like, well, okay. You know, so this is, you're, you're talking to people like that. We had, uh, we had another lady that came during COVID that found us, um, you know, through the, through the live stream. And she was just wrapped up in anxiety and depression. She had been 
really involved in a cult, like to the point that they were controlling her life. And it was like, and she was just feeling totally, uh, you know, depressed and, and God brought her out of that. We've seen her like just come out of her shell and like, and God work in her life. And, wow. um, so story after story, we were seeing God move in conditions that we thought were set up for us to, to not, I want to say fail, but certainly to have greater a level of obstacle. Yeah. Like big challenges. I mean, big challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, uh, I remember one particular Sunday we had, uh, we were live streaming and, and we decided, we, we realized that we've, we now had some people that were like, I want to get baptized, you know, like, like God was starting to, to really move out of, of COVID and, and we had people coming back to the church. We had, you know, new Christians coming, you know, and I, I started talking about baptism when we were like setting up our first baptism since us taking over the church and since coming out of COVID, like this was going to be a big moment. And, um, I just remember coming to the end of a service and, and, uh, and I gave like just the, the, the ask, right. You yeah. know, I'm asking, Hey, if you, if you want to accept Jesus, you want to say yes to Jesus today. And I, I just remember in the very back of the church, I saw this just hand just shoot, you know, straight up. Yeah. And after service, this guy, this young guy, Japanese guy comes up to me and he's like, I was watching online and the Holy, he's like, I just felt like God was started speaking to me that I need to get baptized. Wow. And he, he had no clue, you know, really even what that was or how, like how to do that. But he just felt like the presence of God in his apartment and so he was watching the service. He wasn't even here during the most of the service, but God was speaking to him. So while the service was going on, he rushed out of his apartment, wow. ran to the church and got here five minutes before I asked. Wow. And then like, and then he raised his hand, accepted Christ. And then we baptized him like, Man, like two weeks that's later. Awesome. So, so even though COVID brought challenges, the fruit that came out of that was even more precious because we knew that it was born in difficult circumstances. Yeah. You know, and I love what you said, how it's just, it's special because it's born out of these difficult and challenging circumstances. Yeah. But even outside of like the last few years, Japan traditionally, at least from what I, you know, I don't live here, but at least from what I understand, yeah. I mean, this is a difficult place. Um, yeah. Could you speak to a few of those challenges as like Japan as a whole? Yeah, I, th I think, uh, you know, probably a lot of places have this story, but we were told, you know, Japan is a missionary graveyard. It's a place where missionaries come to die and, and you know, have a really difficult time mm -hmm. seeing fruit here. And so we came in with an expectation and willingness to face that. Yeah. Um, and so for the first few years here, I really thought that that was going to be you know, that, that was how it's going to be. Then when we became, uh, became pastors here at ICA and we really started to drive community, I really felt like God had kind of shifted our focus towards young adults. And I mean, you know, historically, even within, uh, some of the Japanese writings about Christianity and how it's coming into Japan. I mean, it's, I mean, one, one of the authors that wrote a book, it literally said Japan's like a swamp. And mm. like Christianity would just never take root in a swamp. Wow. It just couldn't take root. And so, um, and there, I think there is kind of like this prevalent belief, you know, that, that it would be that difficult. And, but we just felt like God had called us here and knew that it was for a reason. And, and so what we've seen though at ICA, um, is that people are way hungrier and way more open, I think, than we initially expected them to be. Yeah. When you provide strong community and a place for people to belong and to feel connection to another human that actually cares about them and loves them, not for what they provide or what they worked for, but just because the light of Jesus is in them, yeah. um, the, the results are astounding. And we've seen incredible salvations. I mean, just in the last you know, few months, we had a young girl from Mongolia who is like a, that's a really difficult nation also. Yeah. And, um, and she's, 
you know, been in Japan for, for five months and, and she got invited because our young adults has just exploded here and like they're inviting people all the time. Almost every week we've got people that have never, you know, been to church, never ha- heard of Jesus, don't have any connection, but our young Japanese Christians, our young Christians from China, are you like yeah. from all of these different nations are inviting them. And, and so she got invited and she, God just rocked her in the middle of the service and like, I mean, just within a short, like maybe two weeks, you know, three tops, she had given her heart to Christ. Wow. She got on fire. She was like, she, she's just like, you know, told me that she, she was just shocked actually to find out there was more Mongolian Christians around her that she didn't even know about. Wow. And she's like sending all of our live streams and everything back to her family back in Mongolia to try wow, to get awesome. them, you know, you know, saved. And, and even within the young people, we see God calling them. You know, I've, I've talked to our young people and I, I say, if this is such a difficult place, we know that God is calling people everywhere. Yeah. So if he's calling people everywhere, then that means he's calling people in Japan. And if he's not calling you, who's he calling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> yeah. Like if not you, who else is it going to be? Yeah. Like you're the ones that have this incredible testimony, you know, and what's amazing is that we have seen God call people and we've got a young Japanese girl that's just just in love with Jesus and just serving him. Uh, and I mean, they're doing prayer nights here at the church that wow. we didn't even organize. They just like, they, we just want to be in God's presence more often. And she's even expressed to us that she has a heart to become a missionary, which wow. is amazing because if you knew how rare and how precious that was here, I mean, right now our organization, we, we only have maybe three or four, Japanese missionaries being sent out from this country. Wow. Which is astounding. Yeah. And so, um, so it's been incredible to see God move in, in places that other people said, Oh, this is impossible. This is too difficult. It's a swamp, you know, and to see God overcome those challenges, it's given us a new renewed faith and our expectations have totally shifted from where they were a few years ago. Yeah. And so now now we're seeing God uh, to to do things in a way that is much on a gra- on a much greater level and and in in multiplying the results that we're seeing um, in ways that we just we didn't see you know yeah. we didn't foresee so yeah well we we really do believe like the best is yet to come yeah. right and so how can we you know how can our listeners and our viewers be praying for Japan you know change the map this is a movement about prayer and so we believe that prayer can fuel a lot of this stuff and open these doors and soften hearts and, you know, break these chains in some of these, you know, hard places. How can we pray for Japan specifically over the next month or so? Yeah, we would love that. Um, you know, one of, one of the things we continue to do is we provide media resources to chat churches in Japan. And so, um, you know, most churches here just don't have access to help, to like learn how to do live streams, learn how to, sure. how to evangelize through, through digital means and things like that. And so we really believe ICA is going to be a, a resource hub for churches all, all throughout Japan. Awesome. And so, uh, please pray with us as we, we actually have a, a incredible partnership right now with the national host church here in Japan. We've got a workshop coming up here in just a short time and we're going to be working hands-on, you know, in person with, with, uh, church teams and, teach them how to reach people. That's Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, the second thing would be is we, we're so focused on young people right now because we know that they desperately need Jesus here. And so we're, we, uh, are launching a campus ministry for the first time here out of ICA. Awesome. We're actually right across from one of the largest universities in Japan. And so we've got almost 30,000 students right outside our door and God has called us to, to reach out to them. And, and so we're going to be doing some, English conversation, uh, uh, during the week and really trying to, to pull them into community. And so pray with us for that. Pray with us for that launch. Um, the third thing would just be to the growth for laborers here in the mission field. We, we, we're building our team and we need more people that are creative missionaries that work in media, that work in kids and youth and young adults, and those that just feel called to, to come here and serve and, um, and reach these, these people that just desperately need a connection to someone. Um, the fourth thing I would say would just be uh, a spiritual awakening here. We talked about the darkness in Japan and it's, it's so real. I mean, yeah. we step outside this door and there's thousands of people right outside our door 
and many of them are walking down the street with absolutely no hope. Yeah. Um, they they feel a huge amount of anxiety and, and depression is, is a big problem here and we just need a spiritual breakthrough. Yeah. And so pray for that with us. Awesome. So we've got, uh, media ministry, resourcing the church. Yeah. Number two, we've got, um, the college ministry, yeah. campus ministry, and number three is the spiritual, uh, the number workers. three is the workers. And then number, and by the way, number three workers, uh, this is your opportunity. If you want to come and serve these yeah, guys, absolutely. just reach out for sure. Um, we'll have, you know, links in the, the description so that you can reach out. Um, we're not going to just ask God to send them. We're going to ask you to, <laughs> yeah. to come as well. Yeah. Um, and then number four, just for spiritual breakthrough, because this yeah. place is dark. You don't have, you know, less than 1%, you know, Christian, yeah. um, in a nation of how many people? Yeah. So we're right now, it's like a hundred and, you know, 30, you know, 40 million, you know, so it's like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and right here in Tokyo, we've got greater Tokyo. We've probably got between 26 and 30 million. Yeah. Yeah. And so there is some serious spiritual darkness in this country, in this city. And so be praying for that too. Jonathan, thank you so much. Yeah, man. Uh, this has been a blast. I love getting to hang out with you. Yeah. Um, and if you could just pray for those things, we're going to close it, uh, close it with a prayer. So sure. thanks again for coming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's pray. Hey, God, thank you so much for what you're doing in Japan and what you've started. Lord, we just ask, Lord, that uh, so many churches here are struggling and they need help. And thank you, God, that you sent us here to do that. Um, we just pray for more opportunities, more open doors, Lord, for churches to realize that there is strength uh, in, in in unity in numbers. Father, we just pray, Lord, that you can help us in our partnership with uh, giving tools and putting tools into the hands of Japanese Christians. Yes. Father, we pray for our campus ministry. Lord, we pray for the launch of reaching uh, reaching these young adults, reaching these students that are, are really facing a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure in society, Father, to perform, to be successful. And Lord, they just want to belong somewhere to have community. And Father, we believe you're going to help us to do that and to grow that ministry. We also believe that you're going to grow our team, that you're going to send more workers to this field where we so desperately need people that are called here and purposed here to reach out into this country and to share the light of Jesus with, with others. Father, we also ask for an incredible spiritual breakthrough, one greater than we've ever seen in the history yes. of Japan. Father, that we would overcome, Lord, the, the idea that this place is a swamp, that it's not reachable, that it's not, uh, it's not possible, Lord, for you to move here. Father, we know that that's not real, that's not true, but Lord, you can move here in incredible and powerful ways right here in the Buddhist world, Lord, that right here in Japan where people are feeling hopeless and anxiety, Lord, that there is a God that loves them, that cares about them, and Father, we want that God yes. to be known to them, to become real to them, and most of all, that they realize that Jesus is accessible to them anytime, any place. Father, we thank you for what you're doing here in Japan and around Asia Pacific. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Change the Map podcast. For more information, visit www.changethemap.net.